Mm-hmm. All right, let's get started. Um, hey, everybody, it's Tori, the founder of the Mighty Dames, and I know, I know, it's been a long minute, but we are back with another interview. Um, and today, I'm joined by someone who, who's been around for a minute now. Um, yeah, <laughs> Sarah. Hey, how are you doing today? I am doing great. Happy to be uh, here. Happy to be talking to you. Me too. So, um. Let's do the basics. So mm-hmm. let's get your rank, where you train for, and where you train out of, how long you've been training, all that jazz. Yeah. So I'm a four stripe blue belt. I train out of shell shock Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, and I have been training for, it'll be five years in October. That's awesome. So um, what got you into Jiu Jitsu? Yeah. So um, <clears throat> it's a pretty heavy uh, start. So mm-hmm. I have been assaulted six times. And after the sixth one, I was like, if this is a pattern, then I need to be better equipped. Um, Mm -hmm. I kind of started switching from a victim mentality to uh, how can I defend and protect myself mentality. And so Mm -hmm. I wandered into an MMA gym I had heard about locally at the time it was in Ohio. Mm -hmm. Um, It was a very small hole in the wall, actual like garage with no AC, no heat, uh, no potable water. Um, Some real old school mentality. Stuff yeah. There. Old Walked in gyms. there, uh, saw the, the head instructor covered in tattoos. He's a former felon. Um, <laughs> and I was like, Hey, can you teach me to suck less at like defending myself? And he was like, mm-hmm. I got you. And I was like, all right. And so I was there for two years. Um, okay. That gym ended up closing um, during COVID. And um, I'm really thankful for the time that I had there. Um, and I'm really uh, thankful for the introduction that I got. Um, I'm also very thankful for my new gym. Um, knowing what I know now about building a strong women's program and what it takes to get women into the gym and to retain them. Mm -hmm. I'm shocked that I stayed in the sports, like given the start that I did. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, it started for self-defense and then very quickly fell in love with the Mm -hmm. puzzle and the art. And um, then eventually the community and the extreme for me challenge of competition. Um, And I just really enjoy being around so many people that are striving to improve themselves and that Mm -hmm. are purposefully choosing to face their weaknesses and their failures every Mm -hmm. single day stepping on that mat like they're not afraid to fail they're facing that at and and gaining the the ultimate win of improving yourself and bettering yourself and the people around you um so it's just been really life-changing for me overall yeah that's I feel like unfortunately we hear that story a lot of women coming mm-hmm. into jujitsu as a way to um, cope with past physical or sexual trauma. And yeah. you, like you said, like, um, so I'm a domestic, I'm actually, I'm a domestic violence case manager. So like mm-hmm. it kind of hits differently now. Um, yeah. Now that I have a little bit more um, work in the field of um, not just female, but like um, intimate partner violence and sexual assault. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you see people who, go through these things it's like it's happening and most of the time there are a lot of repeat offenses yeah. and mm-hmm. some women have that moment when they're just like yeah I'm done I won't take it anymore that's I that's what happened to me done and yeah. um it takes a lot to get there and that's like I want like because I didn't completely know your story but like I want to commend you because I see a lot of women that's a hard step to take and if, yeah. it's a hard step to even acknowledge let alone take to yeah jujitsu is weird man <laughs> yes and it like, is and like yes, it, it is it's in like an mma school too that's intimidating <laughs> extremely so intimidating <laughs> and i mean like it, i was in such a terrible place when i started mm-hmm. i was diagnosed with anxiety i was diagnosed with depression i was diagnosed mm-hmm. with ptsd i was experiencing uh-huh. like life altering 
life altering, life interrupting, repetitive flashbacks Mm -hmm. um, from a variety of the trauma that I'd been through. I was on medication. Like I was in a Mm -hmm. dark place. Yeah. And um, (laughs) the training at first was really difficult. I would be on the mat, like Mm -hmm. facing, you know, a similar situation where I was, Mm -hmm. you know, overwhelmed by somebody bigger than me and more Mm -hmm. like, like stronger than me. And like, Mm -hmm. I couldn't do anything about it. And I would have Mm -hmm. flashbacks on the mat. Mm -hmm. Uh, You can ask my training partners. I left the mat crying more than once like to go into the bathroom and try and cry less. Obviously I drove home crying. Like I was in therapy at the time. Um, But after three months, my flashbacks stopped and I have only had two ever since. Um, And my therapist at the time said, I'm glad you're in therapy and that's a really crucial piece, but whatever you're doing in that jujitsu place, you need to Mm -hmm. keep doing it because it is obvious that it is helping you to heal Mm -hmm. from these deep wounds and Mm -hmm. it's giving you the ability to like grow and move forward because I was also in a really toxic relationship for years um, that I realized later was very emotionally and uh, verbally abusive. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've told several women this, um, that I had a moment on the mat one time where my training partner said, you have to defend yourself. And I Mm -hmm. had the thought come across my mind of, but I'm not worth defending. And I had never felt that thought come across. So Mm -hmm. crystal clear. And then once it did, I was like, whoa, hold on. Yeah. We, we need to address yeah, like, this. <laughs> I mean, things just get really dark here. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is, mm-hmm. wow, this is terrible. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, we got some work to do. So I think it was really mm-hmm. good that I was in therapy. The medication was a really helpful tool for me. Mm-hmm. I'm no longer on medication. And as mm-hmm. long as I'm training at least three times a week, I don't feel the need for it anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, which I know is not the case for everyone. Um, I find medication to be a very helpful tool. Um, I'm a lifelonger on the meds. Yeah. Me and my meds. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just, it's been very balancing for me Mm -hmm. overall. It does bring so many unique challenges along with it. Um, And I feel like every time I step on the mats, it's another layer and another Mm -hmm. level of healing that happens. Um, and another layer of difficulty that gets peeled up, but it's just, uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Um, and then competition, I started originally because I felt like it was the most realistic place for me to practice Mm -hmm. the skills I needed because my issue with the assaults in the past was that I would freeze. And I, my first competition, I won, I took gold. And I stepped off the mat, hyperventilating and holding back puking. I ended up puking in the trash can. I went to my teammates and I was like, this was horrible. Yeah. Hated it. Right. Yeah. And they were like, but you won. You should feel great. And I was like, no, I I have so much adrenaline going through me. Mm -hmm. Like I felt like I froze. I felt like I didn't do things correctly. Mm -hmm. Like I felt terrible. And they were like, I don't know what you're talking about. I love competition. And I was like, okay, I must be weird. And then I started talking to more people and I realized that uh, performance anxiety um, Mm -hmm. can be a lot more common. And working with my therapist, I found that she said, you know, stop putting so much pressure on yourself. Like you are not reenacting those traumatic events. Mm -hmm. Like you are here on purpose. Right. Yeah. Like you're doing this for fun. I tell that to my friend Nico often, like we get all hyped up before competition and we look at each other and we're like. We're here because we chose to be We're yeah. here to have fun. Like yep. I am here for fun because I have to reframe it that way so that I don't yep. have like a panic attack in the middle of it. Like- oh my God. <laughs> you just said so much stuff I want to unpack. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's me, a let me, lot. Let me rewind it. First of yeah. all, thank you for bringing up that, um, that mental health is a multifaceted approach yes. because I think, especially in this sport, we get so, um, that, um, the whole jujitsu saved my life mentality yeah. can be great, mm-hmm. but it can also be kind of toxic because it's yeah. not jujitsu alone 
isn't the only thing that you need. So like yeah. it is that combination of having a good support system, of having mm -hmm. a good um, a mental health professional or some type of professional, where that's uh, mental health, religious, somebody yeah. there as like a mentor or a guide. Yeah. And then also you mentioned like medications as well. Like yeah, it, it takes that whole, it takes a village. It does take a lot of things yeah. to help overcome that. So I'm glad that you mentioned that. It's been um, very multifaceted for me. Yes. And yes. Jujitsu has been an integral part, but I needed the other pieces too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what I found like personally, just like for, through my own journey of like, I've also been diagnosed with, my, with several anxiety disorders. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're going to leave it at that. What I also found out is that, um, and I was a victim of it too, that like I got so much into like, yes, jujitsu, I'm going to do this, I'm going to learn that, that it almost became, um, the other things became more glaring mm -hmm. because all I did was switch my um, anxieties from, because um, I was a band kid and I was a, I was like a, a, yeah. a lifelong student. I switched it from one thing and I just placed it on jujitsu and yeah. like that whole performance anxiety and building things up into your head and mm -hmm. all that internal pressure. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm like you, I kind of hate competition. <laughs> I keep, <laughs> but I keep doing it because it pushes me out of my comfort zone. Yeah. But, um, I am that same person, like win or lose it's, it's a coin flip of how Tori's is going to come out of this thing feeling. Like, yeah. It, I, it has gotten uh, better. I have mm -hmm. been competing like a maniac. Yeah, for I've noticed. Two years. Um, I mean, I I last year I did twelve competitions and Ooh. I was out for four months with a dislocated elbow. So I did I, twelve I, in eight months. I like, believe I was there when you dislocated. You were. You were. Your elbow. That was a very difficult day. I joked that my Ooh. silver from hands cost me an arm, but not a leg. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but it, it's yeah. better now. Uh, Good. You know, it's fully recovered, which is great. Um, but I remember it was my fifth competition. Mm -hmm. I remember talking to um, a 14 year old green belt mm -hmm. and I asked her how many competitions she'd been in. And she was like, oh, I don't know. I've lost count. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, to me, like these were all each event was so big to me. Yeah. And um, I it was my fifth one and I, I had puked again it took it took 12 competitions before I stopped puking like and it's because I got c-band oh wait I lost you for a second oh sorry can you hear me yeah, now? go ahead and say it again yeah yeah I got these like c-bands they're like acupressure points okay. that help with nausea and I okay. wore those for years um I no longer need them which is incredible that's good that's good but in my fifth competition, I remember sitting there and thinking, well, they keep telling me to get 1% better every day. Mm -hmm. And I was like, but competition is a different skill. And I was like, so if I'm getting 1% better each competition I do, how many competitions do I need to do before I start stop <laughs> puking, right? Like how many do I yeah. need to do before I enjoy one? Um, yeah. And so, I mean, that number is close to 50 for me. And okay. um, I now still deal with anxiety, still deal with nervousness, but I'm not puking when I go onto the mats and, there you go. uh, I can find enjoyment in it. And I like making new friends and meeting new people because I'm like, what a niche, right? Like yeah. I'm already in a niche. I'm in jujitsu. Yeah. That's a niche. Mm -hmm. I'm in competitive jujitsu. That's yeah. another niche. Mm -hmm. I'm in female competitive jujitsu. Yep. That's another niche. I am in masters, female competitive jujitsu, yes. another niche. And, team masters um, man yeah absolutely i'm never and going then, back like, can i just say i'm never going back to adult <laughs> i never even did adult like i was i was too old when i got here um <laughs> but i you know when i started i was about 100 pounds heavier than i am now so uh -huh. at first i was super heavy female mm -hmm. masters competitive jujitsu yeah. and so i would get so geeked when i saw mm -hmm. the other women in the bullpen i'm like you are so cool like you are also like a woman in her 30s and you are <laughs> societally told that you're not supposed to be an athlete yeah. and you are here being an yeah. athlete mm -hmm. and like I just think you're amazing and I'm yeah. so excited to meet you and um I've created some lifelong friendships just from yeah. having that attitude like my friend Siwar 
um, and my friend Courtney, we have faced mm-hmm. each other on the mat several times, but I am so excited every time I see them, because I think that that has given me just like a, an insight into this tiny sliver of humanity that is mm-hmm. incredible mm-hmm. by its nature. And so, I mean, having that perspective also helped with yeah. like competitive jujitsu. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, Let when I ask- step out onto the mat, I'm trying to win, but I'm not looking at you and being like, you are the enemy, right? Like you're my opponent for those five minutes, but like, I am so glad you're here and I'm so glad to meet you. So. Yeah. I, um, I think I still have moments of like, I kind of like fangirl out about other, like not like higher end jujitsu people, but like, yeah. just, like regular ones when I see them do stuff. I'm like, yeah. just so you know, I think you're super dope. Yeah. We are already friends in my head. So go ahead yes. and give me your Instagram <laughs> so we can follow each other. I'm just, very you know, much that way. So we're, we we have a hypothetical friendship like already in my plan. We're yeah. going to go get tacos after this. Just so yes. you know. <laughs> um, and, but you know what? That's something about the... Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna come back to something else. This that's something I yeah. like about jujitsu is that like if you're not an asshole, <laughs> it's so easy to to fall into the community. Yes. You know? Yeah. It's so Absolutely. easy to find a uh, a group of people who when you have like a good team and then you find like people yeah. outside of your team who also support you, it's just like it's like the best feeling. That's like yeah, that's the whole reason why the games even exist is to have another secondary community. But like, yeah, when you can go to a competition and like, you just see people you know, and it's not like, like, girl, it's like, oh my god, yeah. hey, how you been? Yeah, how's the kids? It's, yeah, exactly. It's awesome, and I will say, like, being in like masters, I feel like it's a little bit nicer than when you're yeah. an adult. Because like yeah. adults, it's like there's all these young savages trying to murder you. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Like, all the masters are like, look, we have day jobs. Yeah. We're competitive. We call it the we 401k got, club around here. Like, we got other <laughs> stuff we're doing. Yeah. But like, I want to kill you. But like after this, like, you know. But like, only for five minutes. Like <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Um, I, I so- love that secondary community that you're mm-hmm. talking about that's um partially what gloss feels like to me too yeah. that's the grappling ladies of southeastern states so they they sponsored me to go to pans and worlds this year that's so it's awesome. a group of like 500 women across five mm-hmm. different states and we've come together and created a scholarship to send one person to the main they picked you they picked me yeah they had that's like awesome. a blind panel and it was an application and there were essays and like all of this stuff um, but we do these quarterly events where we get as many of these women, uh, together as possible. And we normally have about 50 to 75 women That's and we awesome. get there and it's just like, girl, it's the boy. Like, how's the man? How's the new man? Like, how's yes. the going? Like, how's the wife? Like, and it's just so fantastic. And you walk in the door and it's just like, it feels like another family and it's, yeah, it's really wonderful. That's awesome. Um, okay, so something else I wanted to go back on because yeah. I've re- I've recently like I am a I like to say a recovering yo-yo dieter. I am yeah. someone who has lost like God 60, 70 pounds at least yeah, five, six times in my life. I'm currently right. going through that as well. So yeah. you lost a lot of weight. Yes. How did that affect you mentally, like in a positive? And was there any negative to it as well? Cause I yeah. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I'll get on the tail end of that, but I want you to go ahead. So positive and negative of losing all that weight. Absolutely. So, I mean, 270 pounds is what I weighed when I started. Um, mm-hmm. I had been in a really terrible motorcycle accident. I'd had hip surgery and I was relearning how to walk. Um, Jesus woman. <laughs> yeah. It was a lot. Little things. Um, so I felt like even to start jujitsu, even to walk into that gym, I had to shed so many societal expectations Mm -hmm. for what a woman of my size was supposed to do, Mm -hmm. was supposed to look like, and was supposed to be comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Um, Putting on a Nogi outfit for the first time. I felt like I was a busted can of muffins. Oh my God. Busted can of biscuits. Uh, And I've seen that kind of refrain for a while. And I just felt so out of place. And I mean, there were big dudes at the gym, but the other, the only other woman was like a hundred pounds soaking wet. And so I just felt so out of place. And in my head, like with why I started, I was like, 
if if being uncomfortable is the cost of knowing how to protect myself, okay, like I'm fine yeah. with that. And then I found the Mighty Danes. And when I found that group on Facebook, <laughs> it was such a relief to me. And it was Aww. like this big neon sign that was screaming, you do belong here. You can be here. Like you have oh, a you're place. Oh, you're going to make me cry. I'm so happy to hear. And I was, yeah, I was so encouraged and so inspired by that. And looking at all these other women of all these different shapes and sizes, just killing it out there. I was like, there's a path forward for me. Mm -hmm. Like, look, I can do this too. And it was so encouraging. I didn't start jujitsu for weight loss, um, mm -hmm. but I did have a really hard time finding matches um, when mm -hmm. I was that size. And convincing people to take matches with me because they were convinced, like concerned about the size difference or whatever. Yeah. And so that's why I started losing weight was because I wanted to have more matches. Mm -hmm. um, and then it just kind of also happened because I was obsessed with jujitsu and training yeah. all the time. Yeah, um, I'll do it too. But it's like my, I've told people many times that my goal weight is to be strong and healthy. Yeah. Um, it, it's not defined by a number on the scale. And it's been really difficult having to meet a number on the scale with IBJJF. Mm -hmm. My body likes to naturally sit with me working out six times a week and watching what I eat. It likes to sit at 180. Yep. And IBJJF says, that's too heavy. You need to be 170 if you want to fight yep. people your size. Yep. And it's like, not, it's, it's not real. It's such a struggle for me to maintain mm -hmm. that. And so some positives that I've experienced are like my joints don't hurt as much. I can breathe easier. I can move easier. Like I go to do something and my body does it. And it's mm -hmm. just, it happens so fast. And it's so cool to have a body that is so quickly able to react. Um, mm -hmm. A body that is so strong. Like I, it's great. Mm -hmm. um, some of the negatives have been at 270 pounds. I was not like, I, I didn't look at myself and go like, Oh, you're fat. Oh, you're lazy. I was like, I am beautiful and I am curvy. Like mm -hmm. I'm voluptuous. Like that's uh -huh. how I thought about myself at that size. And mm -hmm. I've had some people look at pictures of me at that size and say, oh, well, you were pretty then too. And I've told them I was overweight, not ugly. Like, yes. What are you talking about? Why, um, like, <laughs> I, I know what I'm about. What are you talking about? Yeah. And so it's actually been really frustrating and discouraging to have lost so much weight and to feel so good about myself and to feel so strong and so able and to still like what I see in the mirror mm -hmm. and to have the IBJJF say you're too big. Yeah. Like yeah. that has messed with me um, mm -hmm. to be at 180 and to be like, I'm too big, yeah. like according to this arbitrary mm -hmm. line that somebody drew in the sand. Yeah. Um, so that has been a negative that has gotten me focused on the scale when in the mm -hmm. rest of my life, I have not been mm -hmm. focused on the scale and I feel forced to kind of define my worth by that yeah. number on the scale. Yeah. I have a chronic pain condition called endometriosis. It's mm -hmm. like related to my menstrual cycle and I easily fluctuate 10 pounds within a month. Gotcha. And I have a very irregular period, even with the hormonal um, medications that I'm on and everything. Mm -hmm. And so I don't even know when my period's going to be. So it's like a crap. Uh, like, I'm like, all right, here's worlds. Um, I hope I'm on weight. Like, yeah. It's terrifying. It's so yeah. stressful to have to make weight. And I wish that as a whole, that jujitsu was handling the fact that women's bodies are different than men's bodies. Uh, better like yep. it, they like to pretend classes. that periods don't affect your yeah. weight as much your as weight. it does yeah um let alone other yep. things um yep so that's um, that's been another frustration is like I have almost developed some of these insecurities because mm -hmm. of wanting to achieve good things in competition um and needing to meet this number on the scale um, which is just difficult for me on several different levels. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because um, I always tell because at my I just recently was at my highest was around 350. So right yeah. now I'm right around 300. Mm -hmm. And I always told pe people would always like people always compliment you. And I, it's funny because I literally just did an update video on this. People compliment you so much when you lose weight that it almost makes you think like, was I supposed to not like myself when I was yeah. bigger? Because 
Yeah. I was still over here throwing it to like I was still looking yeah. good. So yeah. I think I was like, get that, it, girl. <laughs> yeah, I think that's one of the um one of the things that doesn't get talked about enough. And it's one of the reasons why I try not to put progress pictures up either, mm-hmm. is because it I can feel so good about, like you said, others. I get on the scale once a month, maybe to kind of mm-hmm. track where I'm headed. Um, I make a conscious effort not to do it any more than that. Did this thing just, yeah. yeah. Because I will get into my head. And yeah. um, and I think sometimes when you when you participate in a weight-based sport and one where uh, they have a lot of hardcore mentalities of what fitness in elite performance is like, it can be really hard to be like a heavyweight or super heavy and just constantly feel like whatever you're doing is not enough. Like you should be yeah. doing a little bit more. Yeah. Like what if you like I could I could work out every day two times a day. And I will never be anything other than a super heavyweight. It's just not going yeah. to happen. But you're too tall the, for it. Yeah. Like, but at just, the same time, it's crazy that like me and you'll be in the same weight class. Yes. <laughs> same division. Yeah. And um because there's a five pounds that you you'd have to cut to get to right. the next division. Meanwhile, yeah. I'm over here eating donuts yeah. before we go before we go yeah. to the back. So I've yeah, I, to I, a lot of tournament leaders and organizers about this. And actually, Fuji just went through a change of hands, and Tim Morthland is the one that um, heads up my region, and he actually went to bat for us. Like he's heard me talking about this for years, and they created a new weight division for women. Awesome. Um, from 175 to 200. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, that's that's so much better. And I'm really excited. And I hope that um, we get some of those 175 to 200 people um, showing up because they're yeah. like, well, we don't have it because those women don't show up. And I'm like, I've spoken yeah. to those women and they stopped showing up because they had because to fight people twice their size yeah. or yeah. lose 10 more pounds when they're already really fit and really mm-hmm. active. Um, I, so yeah, I, that, they're just checked out of the circuit at this point. Like we've got to find them again and be like, Hey, there's room for you now. Like we want you here. Like, yeah, and I hear <laughs> this. I've heard this, you know, I've been training about nine years now and I always yeah. heard this and it's kind of hard for me because like, I know I will always be on the top end of mm-hmm. what that, what that is. Even when I'm in what I consider like my best competition shape, I'm still around yeah. 250. Yeah. So like, there's this, um, I feel like it should be around 200 and up just given yeah. what it is, but given, what, I agree. given what American, well, it's not, it's not an American based sport. It's, it's, it's international, but just given the diversity of body types that we have thinking that like one, 170 is not a lot of weight. That's not no. a lot of woman. That's like, it's really not that much. The so, average um, woman weighs 175. Like, yeah. So it's, it's crazy <laughs> and I the think, average so like think, why are we breaking it off as like that's the cap like that's crazy so and, to me and I think we see this a lot in combat sports um we see this a lot in like the men's side and like um especially like in like jiu-jitsu and MMA yeah. and like combat sports in general is when you get to like bigger athletes they tend not to do combat sports they try to like find success in other activities so like that's mm-hmm. why you see like these these freakish athletes doing like um basketball football tennis yeah. and stuff like that so when you get these combat sports you, when you see like what is considered like true elite of this they tend to be small because they they really couldn't fall into any of the more traditional sports so a lot of those athletes mm. fed to like combat weight-based sport because there's a place where they could have like an even playing field yeah if yeah. you think about like okay i'm an mma hardcore but like Think yeah. of all the best divisions in MMA. They're the smaller ones. It's mm-hmm. like I love, I love. Look, I watched the fights last night. I watched Derek Lewis do his thing. But yeah. heavyweight, heavyweight MMA is trash. It really yeah. is. Um, you see, with like Amanda Nunez retiring and all that stuff, bantamweight jujitsu. I mean, bantamweight MMA is not good. The best division, one fifteen. Why smaller people, more, um, more participation. So. I think also a lot more technical. I think like, absolutely. I, I train under Sam the Wolf Queen Shell. Sam! And she is yeah, she's a professional MMA fighter, yeah. and she weighs like a hundred and 
1520 walking around and fights yeah. at 105 yeah like and all the fights that I've seen from her are so incredibly technical. And yep. every time I'm sitting there, I'm like, where is my notepad? I need to be taking notes. Like, this is so, yep. I feel like I'm in a master class. Like, and yeah, it's, and that, it's incredible to watch. Yeah. And that's, um, that's something that we, we see happen all the time. It's the, mm -hmm. um, the, the size sometimes dictates that quality in that it's um every now and then you do get people who come into the come into like a combat tape based sport a combat weight based sport because they truly they purely want to do it but yeah. um a lot of times especially like this is we're coming at this as hobbyists but we think of people yeah. who come at it as professionals like there's not a lot of money in this what i want no. to like i think for myself like me i'm six one I'm um if I had to choose a sport that I wanted to go into to put all of my time into to make money, jujitsu would not be my first choice. Honestly, if I was really trying to no. think of like how can I make money off my athletic body, I'd go into pro wrestling, you know? Like that's the different like you there's other ways. So I feel like we do lose a lot of um quality and like a lot of individuals who would help in that development of the sport and that yeah. can get us um get, get us a more firm place at the table just because um first of all combat sports isn't for everybody so first you got to get like people to agree to do to it then you have to get them to see it as a viable option and not just an alternative to all of these other sports you know what i'm saying yeah so um quick hiatus but we're back let me think. What else was I going to ask you? I was going to ask you something else. I know we were just talking about, um, so the whole aspect of weight um, within mm -hmm. jujitsu, within combat sports, and how um, I think, I think, um, how do I phrase this? Okay, one of the things about the Mighty Dames is that we actually, I rephrased what our purpose was because it used to be like, promote positive body image and I rephrase yeah. it to promote healthy body image yeah just because I feel like um toxic positivity is so strong in this sport absolutely whether it comes from like um you know like they don't it's almost like we don't believe in like overtraining or yeah. um overextending yourself or anything yeah. like that it's always been like oh embrace the grind you know the the hustle oh, culture. every day oh my god the hustle culture is so strong within jujitsu yeah that like it's just the back of my as mind hard is as like, possible all the time back of my mind is like mm, it's just like capitalism getting into this gym <laughs> and, yeah. um, are we just not realizing that maybe we shouldn't do it and i like that one of the things you said like i think you're talking about like before a competition you have to remind yourself like this is a hobby this is yeah. for fun yeah absolutely I just did, I was just talking to someone else about this exact same thing that I feel like what jujitsu can do, especially when you're competitive, you, you, you compete, is that it can kind of suck the joy out of something you initially picked up, either to protect yourself or as a release of some sort. Mm -hmm. We turn it into like such a competitive endeavor that we lose the joy and our spark. I feel like that's why we get a lot of burnout with yeah. the sport. It has um, the potential to consume you. Mm -hmm. and Easily. Easily. Yeah. And, and that's been something that has been a huge focus of mine this year. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, to circle back real quick before I get into that, I like that you're talking about promoting a healthy body image. Mm -hmm. um, because like, I mean, I mentioned I didn't start jujitsu for weight loss, but at my heaviest, I was pre-diabetic um, mm -hmm. and I am no longer. And I was dealing mm -hmm. with lots of chronic um, in sinus infections and like all these major health issues. And a lot of them were resolved when I lost the excess weight. Can um, we just so talk about, I, can I just pause you real quick and talk about like, yeah. when you're like in that almost 300 pound weight, I don't think people understand how much just getting up <laughs> and yeah, doing mundane so tasks. It's exhausting. That was some of my first goals was like get up and down off the couch 10 times. Yeah. Like, cause I couldn't do a squat at that weight. Like I, like my knees would ache like entirely too badly. And so I needed like support when I first started I my old gym. Go ahead. Yeah. My old gym made fun of me like in good 
like faith, yeah. but um, they were like, most people start at square one, you're at square zero. Cause they had oh. to teach me how to do a sit up. They had to show me how to squat properly. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't know mm-hmm. how to do any of that stuff. Yeah. And that's why I tell people all the time where it's so important for everyone, but especially people who are struggling with, um, um, with body image and as it relates to your weight to find mm-hmm. a welcoming gym, because it can be yeah. really demoralizing when, um, some basic, like truly basic fundamentals, like you, your body physically yeah. is struggling to do it. Yes. Like, um, telling people like, okay, like a technical stand up, and you're like, listen, me going from here up to here is issue. You want yes. me to get up? Yeah. Let's on break one this arm? down. Like, yeah, what? on one arm with one leg. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. So I yeah. think that um, it is very important to like, you have to find a supportive gym. And yes. um, when you do, uh, and they encourage you, um, it means everything, especially when they don't, mm-hmm. they um, encourage you while not coddling you. Yeah. Um, Cause I feel like it can also go on the other end where like, Easily. like I yeah. can't do it. They're like, Oh, that's fine with me. Yeah. I am. I am an unapologetic complainer. People like at my, at my <laughs> home gym, at my, um, my, uh, at my uh, gym, that I've been at for years. They know that I am going to bitch and complain, yeah. but they also know I'm going to do it. My coach is like, yeah, Tori. Okay, so you still got two reps left. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Wanna do it. Anyways, and moving like, on. <laughs> yeah. Then it's like, okay, Tori, did you do it? All right, next. Yeah. So I'm sorry to cut y'all. Just thinking about that. Yeah. No, you're fine. Um, but then back to the competition aspect, and not even just the competition, but I think it's an especially acute issue for competitive jujiteras mm-hmm. and jujiteros of um, losing your identity in the sport. Mm-hmm. Um, so many people define themselves just with jujitsu and this just came into such a harsh light for me when I dislocated Mm -hmm. my elbow, Mm -hmm. I was reeling. I was like, Mm -hmm. you know, I, this transformed my mental health and now I don't have it. Like, and I was like, I need other coping mechanisms. I need to develop, like, I'm a very multifaceted individual and I have forgotten many of my like additional pieces of myself Mm -hmm. in lieu of pursuing pans pursuing worlds that was my only focus and my relationships have have suffered for it multiple conversations (laughs) yeah my relationships have suffered for it my hobbies have suffered for it I've been a violinist for 20 years I hadn't picked my violin up in a year what oh my god wait wait, time out you're you were like a music kid too yes yeah I was in orchestra because get this I was told as a child sports are not for you. You are not athletic. You cannot do <laughs> this and you should pick something else. Like okay, so- for most of my life, I know it's, it's kind of hilarious. Cause like where I am now, now it's hilarious, but my whole life, I mean, I was known as crutches girl in high school. Cause I would trip on air. I was on oh. crutches like five or six times in high school because I would roll my ankles all the time. Um, and like, as a kid, when I was like seven, I flunked out of gymnastics because I couldn't do a somersault and they were like sports is not for her she needs like have you tried music and so I did violin I did orchestra for years okay so I played um I was in marching and concert band all the way up Mm -hmm. to grad school I played I was I was a low brass girl so I played okay baritone trombone and tuba so yeah my mom played trombone yeah I will say that like something that I noticed um as we're talking about like we transfer our value from one thing to the, the next. Yes. I spent 20 plus years as a musician. When yeah. and I, I think people don't understand, especially when they like, there's musicians as like you pick up an instrument and there's another one when you go through it, when it's yeah. cool and all that, your identity is music. Is music. Yeah. And yeah. once I got out of school, it's, it's not a coincidence that six months after graduating from grad school, I got into jujitsu. I had mm-hmm. transferred my obsession from music yeah. into jujitsu. Yeah. Um, and I feel like you brought up that um you talk about like tying your self-worth to this sport is so tricky. Mm-hmm. Um yes. and I I was I was guilty of it. And um when you tie your self-worth to it, you also tie your ego to it as well. So when you do great, you're on top of the world, but when you mm-hmm. do bad, you're like, 
I am a piece of crap. Where, where, yeah. what is life? What, is what am I doing with my life? life? What yeah. am I doing? So yeah. that's why I always tell, I try to, ex- I try to do this, especially with new women to the sport. It's like the way of longevity in this sport is to train. But once you are finished, forget about it and do the other stuff in your life. Be because balanced. Yeah, yeah, you have to have balance. And again, it's hard to have balance in a sport where people are literally telling you jujitsu is life. Yeah. So jujitsu is still a massive part of my life. Mm-hmm. I like I I train, I teach, I compete. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. I, it there is rarely a day that goes by where it's not a part of my day. Yeah. Um I invest an incredible amount of effort and energy into it. I also have a full-time job. Well, actually I have multiple part-time jobs, but I mean, yeah. I have a day job, you know, like, yeah. Uh, jiu-jitsu is, that, is not how I make my money at all. Isn't that the millennial, like, is that like the millennial lifestyle? It's like I had a full-time yeah. job and like a really aggressive hobby and like four yeah. side hustles right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. That's basically what's going on. Um, but I mean, so all of that and, with the elbow dislocation, like I I had to get back into my other hobbies. I was like, Mm -hmm. okay, like I used to write, I used to paint, I used to do violin. Like I used to hike, like where did those things go? And like tapping into those things and brushing Mm -hmm. the dust off. I'm like, wait, this was like a really big piece of me. And then kind of boiling down to, well, where is my identity? Is it in Mm -hmm. the activities that I do? Is it in the Mm -hmm. hobbies that I have? Or is it something deeper than that? And having to address those like really core, like, deep down issues that I didn't even realize I'd had because I was distracting myself with jujitsu. And that's why we love therapy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> My therapist and I have a very tight relationship. Yeah. Um, but when Leandro Lowe um, passed away, uh-huh. there were some things that were said about him that really stuck with me. And that was, he wasn't just a black belt. He wasn't just a world Mm -hmm. champion. And I'd never really heard anybody use that qualifier in that Mm -hmm. sentence. It was like, they're a black belt. They're a world champion. Like, what else do you need to know? Yeah. And with him, it was like, no, he was a good friend. And Mm -hmm. he was like a good brother. And he was a good son. And like, he valued these relationships. Jiu-Jitsu was an integral part of his life, but it was Mm -hmm. a part of his life. Yeah, And so that really helped me to kind of reframe like what I want jujitsu to be for me. Like mm-hmm. if you're in my house, you'll see jujitsu art on the walls, but you'll also see like trinkets and things from my travels. You'll see my yeah. instruments, you'll see books. Um, uh-huh. It's p- a piece of me. Um, yeah. And it's been a really big focus of mine this year to put that back into the right magnitude of like, mm-hmm. this is part of me, but not mm-hmm. all of me and not all that I am. Mm-hmm. And um so, so that was really big. And then also focusing on recovery. My yeah. first year to go to Worlds, I was in the gym six days a week, twice a week uh, or twice a day. I'm sorry. So like at least 12 sessions per week. Um, I was constantly injured. I was very burnt out. I was in a lot of pain. Yeah. Um, I, I'm in pain just thinking about that. That sounds yeah, horrible. I was in incredible shape, but everything hurt. Like, yeah. and and then my my next worlds, um, I felt like a hollow shell of myself. Mm-hmm. Like I was like, here I am. I met your stupid weight, IBJJF. Like you're mm-hmm. welcome. My body is in the condition you require, and I'm miserable. I yep. am not enjoying myself. I yep. want this to be over. Everything like is this this like, even like, if this I is win, trash. Like, this is all trash. Like, this feels yeah. horrible. Uh-huh. And so I've I've spoken to just many wise people in my life, um, including, you know, like my professor and then other women in the community, Melissa Sheppy, um, Melissa Connors, um, and many others that I can't name right now. But uh, just kind of gathering this like wisdom and tapping into people who've been in the sport longer than me and mm-hmm. having them say, you need to recover. Like, where is your recovery yeah. regimen? And like, where's the yoga? Where's the mobility work? Like, where's all of this stuff apologizing to your body for everything that you're Mm -hmm. doing to it. Mm -hmm. And so I dialed back my training schedule and dialed up my recovery schedule. And this year I feel balanced and I feel comfortable and I feel confident and I feel my whole self. And I feel like I'm bringing all of me and not just this shaved down, pared down, 
fragment of myself. Yeah. Like that's awesome. So hopefully it works, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so are you competing at heavy or super heavyweight for um I'm competing? The plan is to compete at heavyweight. Um okay. so uh I am gonna have to make some some leaning out happen this month. Okay. Um, so I've got about 10 pounds to lean out, um, which okay. will be challenging, but I've learned a lot better how to approach that than I did in okay. years past. Good, um, good. But it's, uh, you know, still sucks. Least, yeah, it, it still sucks. Um, but at least this year, like going in there, I know I've taken care of my body good. and I've honored it, um, in ways that I have not before. Mm -hmm. Um, and so no matter what happens out there, I know that I've come onto the mat, a better version of myself than I have in years past. That's awesome. I will do a shameless plug here. So, um, yeah. uh, one of the things that we are going to be starting with the mighty dames is we have a recovery tea coming out. Awesome. I, I am also someone who like my, my body is, it's been through some things and, yes. um, my girlfriend has a, uh, my girlfriend is like, we said she's like a blooming herbalist. She has. Like, okay. She'll kill me if I show you her office because it's not together right now. But so um, one of the things that was very important when I started hitting a re more regular training was the recovery process. And yeah. um, I was doing all this work, but then like I'd have these great sessions and then like I'd be burnt out for two, three weeks. So she made yeah. me, she came up with this blend of um, with, the, with different stuff in there that I drink after my practices. Nice. And it made such a huge difference. So we will be selling a recovery tea very cool. starting next month. Um, yeah. you know, all organic homegrown, not so yeah, yeah, organic, some of it's homegrown because she has gardens. Yeah. Stuff everywhere. Nico, so, um, Sam, John, and I all like have just been diving down the rabbit hole of recovery. Like what are the oh, best supplements? What's the best timing absolutely. to do your protein versus your carbs? Like where do you Listen, want your like, macros? Like, How is, do you want to split out your deficit? Like, like where are your... I'm in her office like, how right are you? now, so yeah, got like some holy basil. <laughs> so What's I'm this? all about it. Rose, so like we, she literally has like just right here is the whole wall of herbs. Yeah. You know? So like I go to her and like um, she does have a company. It's called Sunday Self Care. I go to her and I was like, my 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 everything hurts. She's like, okay, so we're gonna give yeah. you some of this. You need some muscle recovery. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna do some of this. Yeah. And um, we have that. She has some. Um, she has some pain relief bombs that we're gonna be doing as well. Awesome. And I'm excited so, to learn more yeah. about that. Oh my god, I can't wait! I really, I've. Uh, we have a lot of things coming for the dames. I've just had to like. I have an issue with announcing too much stuff too early because I get really excited. Yeah. it's the ADHD in me. Um, I hear you. <laughs> and the other thing is we got this herbal honey blend too. That's nice. Really good for relaxation. Um, so I, I have a degree in international studies with a focus area on ethnobiology. And I've done a lot of work with indigenous tribes in Latin America, specifically Costa Rica. That's um, so wonderfully learning, random. <laughs> yeah, learning all about like all of these different kind of yeah. natural remedies and just the way that people interact with plants mm -hmm. and animals. And for me, the really interesting part was like in the healing aspect of that. So that's yeah. really oh fascinating my God. I will, to hear I will, about. You know what? I'm going to have you send me your, um, send me your address. I'll send you a couple of samples. Oh, yes. Please. Yeah. Yeah. That's so amazing. that was, I am like, she's really like, we can get it from the earth. And I had to get yeah. over my, you know, my Western medicine bias yeah. of that thing. And once I realized like, okay, well, if there's things that we can eat in nature that are going to kill us. There has to be things that we can eat in nature that makes us feel yeah. like improve us and give us life. And I try to take I, a very holistic approach to it. Like yeah. Western medicine is important and has saved my Absolutely. life many times. Absolutely. And natural Me, medicine my mind is still. important and has saved my life many times. Like yeah. I, I look at it with a pretty balanced approach because I think yeah. both sides have Again, pros and balance. Cons. Balance, balance helps out. So yeah, I'm really, we're really excited yeah. about that. So that's going to launch next month. So stay tuned for that so well, um, we've gone yeah we've gone all over the place it's just been fun so what, is, <laughs> what are some of your goals that you have for the rest of the year for yeah. you know your yourself within the sport yeah so um goals for the rest of the year I plan to win master's worlds <laughs> it will be my first time on the podium um but I have a very good feeling about this year Good, I've been doing good. a lot of mindset work, a lot of recovery work, a lot of training, obviously. Um, and just really the big thing for me has been mindset. Um, mm -hmm. That's why I've been competing so much this last mm -hmm. like four or five months um, is because, I mean, I 
I've done like three competitions a month for like that's four months. That's that is it's actually insane. insane. I'm it's sorry I keep insane. looking down. Like I got a tattoo yeah. like a week ago and it's in the stabbing yeah. phase. And I keep <laughs> trying, I'm trying so hard not to scratch it. So I'm just yeah. keep aggressively rubbing my arm. Yeah. Um, but so I've been, I've been practicing the mindset and the approach, um, mm -hmm. because I think that's the biggest thing that I need to get down is balance in that. Cause I used mm -hmm. to go out redlining and then at pans this year, I went out way too relaxed. Mm -hmm. uh, way too relaxed. I've done that like, too. It was a minute and a half into the round. And I was like, hold on, I'm at pans. Uh -oh. This is real. not a regular role. I need to be going all out. And I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you like 60% right now. Like what is happening? And so I turned on the switch and you can just, you can see in that match, yeah. like an absolute switch flip. Um, and, but it was too little too late, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it was very, very frustrating and a bitter pill Ooh, to swallow. Okay. So that's why yeah, I'm I, like going crazy is just trying to get that mindset I, dialed into mm -hmm. where it needs to be. I'm not, I don't know if you're aware of it. Like I said, me and you're like, me and you're great friends now, just so you know. Yeah. Um, Cause we have very <laughs> similar experience. I did the, the exact same thing happened to me at PANS this year. Um, yeah. I, this was like my first competition coming back from my crash and like my layoff mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So it was like my first competition almost three years and I was just happy to be there. Yeah. And like, I was like, I'm Tori, clearly I'm going to win this. I was like, ah, what am I going to put on Instagram? And I was so in my like, oh, this is going to be awesome. And I got taken down like twice in both my, I'm yeah. not, and I'm, I'm not someone who gets taken down. And I'm like mm -hmm. double legged at that. And like, oh my gosh, I, I know. I was like, what? the hell is that's impressive and then in my <laughs> mind I was like yes and in my mind I was like oh shit they're really trying to um you need to you need to get together yeah and then like, I wait no <laughs> yeah and even when I even after I won my first match and I think I put it on my Facebook on my Instagram page you can see me like I was dead I was exhausted mm -hmm. I was just like oh it was horrible and the same thing happened in my next match is like I could I gassed out and got mm -hmm. stuck in a position that I was like, what am I doing? And man, credit to the other girls. They made me work. And like mm -hmm. afterwards, I was like, that's when I really started um, reformulating. It's like, okay, Tori, what are you, whatever you are doing is not working. We got to make some drastic changes. Cause like, even though um, uh, I used to be really, really, I was like, you, I was really, really heavy, heavy in competition. Mm -hmm. um, when I was a blue belt, but um, as my, as the Mighty Dames grows and I get more comfortable in this role, I've realized that like, I'm not going to be as competitive as I used to be. It's not Your my priorities passion. shift. Yeah, yeah. My priorities switch. I feel like this is my yeah. true calling in this sport, but like, man, I still need to know I got it. Cause it, I'm still Tory. Mm -hmm. So like, I, yeah. still have, I still have a level I expect of myself. And even if I absolutely. Have, I can, I can, I can win like a woman and I can lose like a woman. I have no issue yeah. losing, but when I lose and, and when I win too, and I just know I did not put myself in the best position to perform, mm -hmm. that's like such a hard pill for me to swallow. Yeah, absolutely. Like I just, I just, everyone else like, oh my God, could you? I was so disappointed in myself after mm -hmm. pans and then I just had the Orlando open and you see like in my first yeah. and my last match I'm literally about to cry because like oh yeah. I, okay this this is what I was saying like this is how I should be and again yeah. that that mental that mental build that I put on there I was it was when it was over it was like it was like a, you could see a visible release on my body like yeah <sighs> yeah okay. sorry I had to I just tangents continue no it's good yeah I mean so kind of in line with that concept of priorities mm -hmm. uh I mean like the reason why I'm doing all this competition now um because like I've gotten past the you know how to deal with that adrenaline dump in mm -hmm. a panicky situation right like I've mm -hmm. got that skill now um and I've utilized it actually um but that's a story for another time um but now I'm in it because I'm I'm seeking out accolades. Um, mm -hmm. I want to get as many women into jujitsu as possible. I mm -hmm. want to see this sport explode. I think mm -hmm. jujitsu is for everyone. I don't think that competition is for everyone. Agreed. I don't think that being a black belt is for everyone. But mm -hmm. everyone can learn to fall safely. Mm -hmm. Everyone <laughs> yes. can learn to stand up safely. Yes. Everyone can learn something from jujitsu. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a really critical skill for women to have. Mm -hmm. um, one of my kid students, uh, 
we'll call her E. She and her parent came to me after just a couple of weeks of class and said that she had been cornered and bullied by some 14 year old boys. She's maybe four feet tall, maybe nine years old um, (sighs) at school and that she had gone straight up to them and done exactly what coach Sarah had told her to do. She took him down after telling him that they had chosen the wrong girl to mess with. And then <laughs> went home. At a girl. That's awesome. And just so, I mean, circling back to earlier in our interview, like when I first started, I had the thought you're not worth defending in my head. Mm-hmm. And I feel like so many women are told to be mm-hmm. small and that they're mm-hmm. not worth defending throughout their whole life, whether that's from societal voices or yep. other ones. They internalize and it. I think that even just trying jujitsu for a few months will teach you, you are worth defending and you need Mm -hmm. to step up and defend yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, And here's some tools to do that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really crucial. And um, I would love to be able to help women avoid some of that pain that I've experienced by equipping Mm -hmm. them with the tools that they need for that. Mm -hmm. And I know that to do that, I need a louder voice and I need a bigger platform. Mm -hmm. And I know that that, comes by winning accolades and being successful in the sport. And so that's what's driving my desire to win worlds and my desire to win any of the stuff that I'm in is I want to help women. Mm -hmm. And I know that people aren't like, hey, that girl that lost 43 times in a row, I ought to listen to what she has to say. Yeah. So I know that I know yeah successful to a certain Mm -hmm. extent in order to um, have the reach that I want to have and to uh, affect some some change for women in general um I don't think that there should be I don't think that there should be such a stigma around women like going I I remember also starting like feeling like well what are people gonna think of me like um one of those hardcore people now I guess like can I be feminine still and like I am still feminine and like I felt like society was using this voice to tell me that if you're in MMA you can't be feminine like you know what's funny? having all these stories behind it or that I had to be hypersexualized. Yeah. Like what's funny if you go on my I... Instagram, it is not very sexual. Yeah. <laughs> like, that is some I... people's thing. It is not my thing. Um, I, um... and it, like, I, I want to make it clear that you can pave your own path forward. Yes. Like we yeah. have a pastor and a, like a Catholic father that train at our gym and his wife trains and yeah. I love that. Yeah. I absolutely love that. Like that's awesome. I am um, jujitsu grandma, like yeah, it's 60, there's, there's, 70 year old women training. Like I live for that. I love that. There's so many people who find their way in jujitsu. And I, I it's funny you talk about like the um some people come into jujitsu, they're like, oh no, they're gonna think that I'm not. I I got more in touch with my femininity through jujitsu yeah. than ever before because um I was someone who was so closed off with who had access to my body um, yeah. physically or visibly. I just, I did mm-hmm. not like comments on my body. Cause I'm, yeah. a, I'm a thick girl. I've been a thick girl mm-hmm. for a long time and it always made me uncomfortable. And um, when I got into jujitsu and I really started realizing like, Oh my God, my body is not only like valid, but like, is a huge bonus and I started celebrated yeah Yeah. I really start to feel myself and when I went from wearing spats to wearing shorts baby it changed everything for me I was like look I want to throw these sides out here beware I don't know if y'all are really ready for all the yeah about to offer um so that's one thing that worked for me yeah I remember um again when I first started one of my training partners um Ben Radcliffe he was telling me he was like oh my gosh you feel so heavy and I was like oh my gosh I'm so sorry like I don't mean to squish you and he's huge he's like 6'3 he's like yeah I don't know north of 270 like he's he's a big guy um and he was telling me I was heavy and I was like oh no and he was like no no that's That's a good thing like that's amazing like we work on being heavy yes And I was like, yes. wait, I'm allowed to be heavy and I Hell. am celebrated for being yes. heavy. Like, this is so backwards from what That's I've been awesome. taught, like, it's, my whole life. And it's funny because we have, incredible. Oh, sorry, we have a group of, um, so I teach too, I just taught, and like all of my, all the people I teach, the, the girls, they're all small 
itty bitty yeah. things. But I told them all, I was like, you are all going to be smash passers. You are all going to be, yes. the, I was telling them like, you can be heavy at your weight. You're yeah. going to be the heaviest person in your division every time. Yeah. Cause I'm going to ingrain being heavy. So watching right. these little girls, they're like, like, yes keep doing it yeah so I'm, I'm I'm creating young savages over and here. I I loved the rash guard that you guys put out and I have it the thick and juicy Heck like yeah man. oh my gosh I would wear that to open mats and stuff like it was a super suit man I was like look I'm allowed to be thick and it's celebrated and it's beautiful and it's yep. wonderful and it's it's hey, I got the matching to strength I got the matching compression shorts too I've seen so them <laughs> I go there in a full fit. I'm like, let's do this. And I'm like, yeah. oh my God, here we go. I was like, yeah. I have yeah, some, I have some green it. spats. So I pretend I'm a peach. Like, <laughs> like I got the green and the and the peach. Like I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. Um, okay, so you you want to win worlds. Um, and again, like it's very true. You do do this to create a bigger platform. And yeah. um, when you have that platform, it's it, it makes a difference, man. That's again, that's why we that's one of the main reasons why yeah. the Mighty Dames exists. It was not made yeah. to highlight me, it was made to highlight other women. Yeah. And similarly, the main reason I do a lot of competitions is to get attention. Like people say, Oh, you're doing I do do it for attention. I do it for attention to me so I can bring attention to other things, to yeah. bring attention to other causes, to other women. To give it a voice. And to give it a voice. Um, because some people have not grown into their voice yet. And I was very fortunate to grow into my voice. And to be able to amplify other people. Yeah. And um, in order to do that, you have to, you got to put yourself out there as well. So again, yeah. like, like props to doing that because being a visible presence, being a vocal woman in the world already is hard. But being a vocal woman yeah. in, a, a, in a, a male dominated sport where there's so many ideas of what a female athlete should and ought to be. Like mm -hmm. it, it takes courage, girl. So I'm very proud of you for like, I've been watching your journey for a while. You've been a member, you've been a member of the dames for the while. Yeah. I've been watching you unfold. And it really just like from an outsider's point of view, I've really seen you blossom into your confidence. Yeah. And I just, I love that for you. I love watching all the things you do. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you is just. Thank you uh, so you know, much. Absolutely. You, you know, has... I'm like chief, I'm not chief yeah. cheerleader here. I am here to like, <laughs> Just so you know, like even someone who's not been with you in your gym, I've seen the work you've been doing and I think it's awesome. amazing and I'm so proud of you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so this has been dope. I'm definitely gonna have to talk to you again. Yeah. Is there anything else you wanna you wanna cover? Anything else you wanna say to the people before we head out? Uh you can do more than you know. Mm. Ugh, felt that. Felt that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there are so oh. many voices telling you you can't, and I want you to know you can. Yes. That, I'm going to leave it at that. That was so good. Thank you, Sarah. This has been awesome. Um, You're welcome. Everyone, please make sure to follow Sarah. What are your social media handles? Uh, social media is indianajane.sarahliz on Instagram because I'm obsessed with Indiana Jones. <laughs> you can kind of yeah, see saw, it with the Costa Rica stuff. Like, so I've, ne <laughs> I've, never, seen, I've never seen any of those. I they just sparked a love for adventure in me okay. um, when yeah. I was a kid. So see, I'm like, a homebody who just down to. I'm a homebody who just recently started traveling. Yeah. So that might be it as well. Um, yeah, and then um, I'm Sarah Wills on Facebook. Um, I just recently got sponsored by um, Go Forth, which is a gi brand. Right. They also do no gi stuff. They're gonna send me to a tournament as well. Um, awesome! So I'm super excited about that. You can use the code Willpower and get yourself a little discount if you like any of that stuff. All right, and we'll make and, sure to add all that stuff into the. Uh, we'll put yeah. all that information in the bio for you guys or for the description yeah. for you guys. Make sure to show her some support. Um, and if you're in the southeast region, come to a gloss event and say hi. Listen, you gotta let me know when um, when you have another one. I'm gonna put one on my calendar because yeah. last time I visited, someone wasn't there. So I was at a wedding. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I was so sorry. You were good, but I already promised. I already said I have. I definitely have to come back up there. So yeah, I would love to. Know. Yeah, I would Absolutely. definitely love to come to an event. But um, fantastic. All right, until next time. Thank you so much, Bye. Tori.